do the Los Angeles Kings have one of the deepest prospect pools heading into the 2020 NHL entry draft, and what do they need to find this year? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to Hockey Sky Ring Report. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. We're going to look at the Los Angeles Kings prospect pool. It's a video that we have not done before on this channel. We've done other teams' prospect pools. We have yet to do Los Angeles. And then after this video, we'll also have some other scouting report videos coming out for the 2020 NHL Entry Draft. Currently, just Marco Rossi has been released. So getting into this video, before we get there, if you're interested in more content, hit that subscribe button, of course. Feel free to like the video and comment below your thoughts. What do you think about LA's team? Who is their best prospect? Could it be Alex Turcotte, Gabriel Velarde? Who is it? Lastly, check out my Twitter, at Hockey Levine. And if you want to support the channel, as well as the podcast, feel free to go on my Patreon, which is linked in the comments below. So let's get right into this. So Gabriel Velarde really comes off as that first center in this prospect pool. Of course, Alex Turcotte as well, but Velarde being drafted first, we'll mention him first. He was the 11th overall pick in 2017. Story being, Martin Nichos was drafted 12th overall this year. Rookie for Carolina took a big step forward. Very skilled player. And then 13th overall, another rookie this year for Montreal, was Nick Suzuki. Suzuki looks to be a potential 60-point player. I recently did a video about a year ago on Nick Suzuki, potential development long-term. Feel free to check that out. And so Gabriel Velarde has a lot to measure up to when he's been drafted just before Nichas and Suzuki. We also know this is a draft that had many talented centers being drafted above him. Uh, Michael Rasmussen hasn't really worked out. Casey Middleset hasn't really worked out. Then we also see Nolan Patrick hasn't really worked out. And then Nico Heischer. And so what an interesting draft. A lot of these top centers haven't really worked out. What does Gabriel Velarde do with his game? Biggest issue has been injuries. Last year, he did play in the NHL, 10 games played, 3 goals, 4 assists, 7 points. Extremely talented to start it off. Of course, we know the season before that, he played nothing because of back injuries, and the year before that was also limited to half a season. And so the question becomes, is he injury prone? And I would say he certainly is, but he does seem to be able to have taken that next step. This year, AHL, 32 games played, 9 goals, 16 assists, 25 points. Like I said, 3 goals, 7 points in 10 NHL games. But I really want to focus on two stats in his NHL game. That being his faceoff percentage, 53.3%. For someone who was just 20 years old, really just playing his first season of professional hockey with all these injuries, to just come in and make such an output for a team that has the fourth lowest points in the league, meaning the fourth highest lottery odds, to do that well on the faceoff, Velarde's doing a great job. Obviously, playing as a third-line center, his line mates were mainly Ferk and Moore, also Trevor Lewis at times. Question becomes, who can he play with long-term? Is it Iafalo? Could it be someone like uh, Dustin, uh, uh, Dustin Brown or Jeff Carter? Where does he move up on that list? I think a lot of young guys we're going to mention he might play with. But I really like that stat. I think that's going to show that, he, yes, he can be a center, 6'3", 201. Has a lot of projectable size down the middle. In a lot of ways, he reminds me of Pierre-Luc Dubois, who went third overall in 2016. Going into the 2017 draft, I was extremely high on Velarde. In my opinion, he should have went third. That was my view going into that draft. And I was thinking Heiskanen would go probably around fourth. Of course, looking back on it, we can definitely see Heiskanen, Makar, better picks. But Velarde does have that potential. Where does he measure up? Another thing I want to mention is his shooting percentage. Yes, he only played 10 games, so shooting percentage, it's a very small sample size. But nonetheless, what an impactful time there. 15.8% shooting percentage. If he can even maintain something like 12-13%, we're talking about a young dynamo for this LA team, what they really need to build around. I think that's fantastic. When we look at what he brings, though, stylistically, which of course is very important, skating is the number one issue and always has been, as is the injury issues. But I think he is taking a step forward. Fantastic shot, great playmaking abilities. When we talk about great playmakers that also have fantastic hands, allowing them to transition the shot very well, you usually think of good skaters. And there's a lot of people in this list that are very good skaters. First one coming off, Alex Turcotte. But the question is, what can Gabriel Velarde do long-term with this skating? And I think when he works with his shot better, when he continues to be this fantastic passer, uh, this excellent playmaker, I think overall these skating issues will slowly resolve themselves. And in the NHL, we didn't see as many issues. I think the AHL, we saw a little bit more sloppy footwork there. But NHL really stepped forward. Like I said, I love that face-off percentage. Does that show skating? No. But that shows, obviously, hockey IQ and the abilities that he has. And I think long-term, his skating will work out. 
So I would say long term, Velarde's not going to be a number one center. I think he can be a number two center. When you have Turk out, he probably is your number one center. If Velarde can hit number one, that's fantastic. But to have this one-two punch right there and then still have Kopitar while he's still in his late prime, I think that is a very impactful group. And I think LA can make a charge to the playoffs within the next year or two if these guys do work out. Alex Turcotte, fifth overall pick, 2019. A lot of interesting picks in 2019. We saw a lot of top centers, whether that was Trevor Zaykos, uh, Dylan Cousins, Alex Turcotte. There were so many talented players. And this, of course, comes after Jack Hughes. Hughes didn't have the greatest of rookie years. In fact, one of the worst first overall pick rookie years that we've seen in years. But Alex Turcotte had a fantastic season in the NCAA, as did all these players. Trevor Zagros now looks to be an amazing steal. Dylan Cousins looks to be potentially that player that Buffalo wished they had in Casey Middlestat. Alex Turcotte, 5'11", 185. First thing we talk about is the size, huge difference from Velarde. He's not overly physical either, but just 19 years old, NCAA rookie year, 29 games played, 9 goals, 17 assists, 26 points for University of Wisconsin. What a talented college group. He also played at the World Juniors under 20, 5 games played, 2 assists. But what I like best about Alex Turcotte's game is not what we see statistically. It's the fact that he has elite vision and down-ice mobility that I think we don't see in a lot of other players in LA's system, at least not to that same extent. I think Tyler Madden is another good example, and we'll get to him very soon. But I think Alex Turcotte really embolds what it means to have elite vision at the next level. Great playmaking ability, fantastic hands, high speed. He does have a two-way game that is fairly developed. Some scouts are saying that it could certainly get better. Some are saying it's one of his weaker aspects, but I would say it's one of his better aspects. High top speed, amazing skating, strong IQ. There really is very few weaknesses to Alex Turcotte's game. I would say, though, he can get more physical, needs to use his body more. Being only 5'11", when you see Velarde at 6'3", that's going to be the question. Do you want this massive size? Velarde is someone that, like at the uh, first line center. Do you want him at the second line center? Where does Turcotte go? I think Turcotte is much more of a skilled player overall than Velarde, but I think Velarde is the better goal scorer, and I also think he has a better shot just overall. So whether that's going to work with passing or shooting, I think Velarde does have that talent better, but Turcotte's the better uh, developer of the play. So I think overall, both are going to be top line center capabilities, and it's a matter of who comes out where first or second line. So when we look at LA having the fourth best lottery odds, let's say they end fourth or fifth, who do they draft? There are many centers this draft. We see Cole Perfetti, Marco Rossi this coming off. But then when you see other talented wingers, Lucas Raymond, the question is who do they take? And I don't think it's going to be a center. And as we continue to go through this video, I think we'll see more and more that it's not a center they need. Tyler Madden, of course, trade with the Canucks. A lot of people are saying Tyler Madden could be a huge steal. 16th overall pick, 2018, 5'11", 152. I don't like the size. I think he is fairly under weight. I think he does need to build that up. 20 years old, NCA Northwestern, 37 points, 19 goals, 27 games played, 34 penalty minutes. He's really a balanced player, and that's what I like about his game. Good foot speed. I do think the skating is rather questionable, and so similar to Velarde, is this another center that has questionable skating issues? We don't see that with Rasmus Kupari as much, though. Tyler Madden, though, good down ice vision. Like I said, similar to Turcotte, really the elite sniper of the group. While I said Velarde is a good goal scorer, I think Tyler Madden is this elite center that can snipe. Obviously, they also have Arthur Kaliev, who I think is one of the best prospects that aren't in the NHL yet in terms of goal scoring, going to be prolific. And I think to build him with someone like Tyler Madden, potentially on the same line, that could be an incredible duo. And we're talking about something similar to what uh, L.A. has done for years with Brown, Kopitar, and other players that he's played with, uh, Tofuli, whatever it is. And so I think overall Madden does need to continue to develop his game. I think he needs to add weight. Potentially the break so far can help him do so in the weight room. But I think he'll come in very impactfully next year or the year after for L.A., Rasmus Kupari has been a very interesting player. He's someone who, coming out of the gate from the draft, looked to be a major steal going to L.A. Since then, kind of has lagged behind. If we look at last year's uh, games before this year, he played in Liga, 43 games played, 12 goals, 21 assists, 33 points. In that draft plus one year, really liked those. And so we see him going to the AHL as a 20-year-old, 6'1", 185. Like I said, 20th overall pick in 2018. We did expect a lot from him. Now, he does end up tearing his ACL during international play, and so he can't complete his season. And so there are going to be questions, how does he move forward with that torn ACL? Presumably now, it's much healthier, but is that going to make an impact in his game long term? Injuries to Velarde's back shelved him for close to two years. What will Kupari do? ACL is a serious injury. 
Now, if you look at his AHL games this year, he only had eight points, six goals, two assists, eight points, 27 games played. So the stats are not flying off the page like they did in Liga. Maybe he was rushed to the AHL a little bit. But I, what I really want to focus on, though, is what we saw in the AHL that was similar to Liga. And it wasn't the stats. It was the fantastic skating, and it was the vision. LA is building a franchise that is about elite vision, and you can never go wrong doing that way. If you can develop the game from the back end, use strong hockey IQ, use your vision from the back end, this is the way to build a team. We see that with Turcotte, Madden, Velarde, uh, Kupari, those are the only four people we've talked about yet. They already have fantastic vision, and there are certainly more on this list that do as well. This is the way to build a franchise. He also has very good hands. And when I did a scouting report video on Kupari two years ago, I'll, I'll pin it below uh, on this video. Kupari, I compare to Sebastian Ajo for Carolina. And I think Ajo, in many ways, is one of the most skilled young players that no one's talking about in the NHL. I think Kupari, in a lot of ways also, is a prospect that is highly skilled that no one's talking about. I think we forget about him as one of the most talented prospects in LA system, obviously overshadowed by Turcotte by Velarde and by others, but I think Kupari is definitely there. Is he going to be a first or second line center? I don't think so. I think he's going to shift to the wing. I think when you have good hands, fantastic skating, and vision, this is someone that can develop his game on the wing, and I think being 6'1", 185, he can also get in on that physical game. I can see Kupari playing second line right wing with someone like Gabriel Velarde. I think that would be a really nice combo. I can also see Kupari being a potential trade option. I can see LA using him as trade bait to try and move up in the draft. If LA ends up getting the third overall pick and they want to get someone who's really game-breaking like Lafreniere, I can see them trading up with Kupari trying to make that happen. So I think there's a lot of options there. Last center I want to mention, there are other centers in the system, but I really want to focus on their top ones, Jarrett Anderson Dolan. Interesting story here, a lot of personal uh, story uh, developments here as well, but 2017 draft, 41 overall, 5'11", 196. He's one of uh, Kyler Yamamoto's friends back from juniors, 20 years old, AHL this year, only 28 points, 8 goals, 20 assists, 53 games played. He did get in four NHL games, zero points. So I do like that he played NHL games. I want to see that AHL get better. This year, I expect him to do AHL again, try and make the team, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think his AHL will be probably around 40 points this year. That's what you'd want to see. And then the year after, shoot for NHL. I think what we can see, though, with Jared Anderson Dolan Powerful stride, good balance, strong edge work, really plays with a lot of energy, very high-octane player. I think this is someone that can be a bottom six, potentially third-line player, really an energy player, but I think he's really going to shake things up, provide a lot of energy for the system. This is someone that I want to see in a third-line role because I think he's going to excel their best. I think if you give him too much ice time, I think he's going to make lapses in his game, but I think if you really rein him in, allow him to do what he's comfortable doing, I think he's going to be a very effective player for LA long-term. Now, if you look at their wingers, there's really only two that I want to mention. There is Carl Grundstrom, there is Bulat Chagulin. I did a video on Chagulin two years ago saying he's a potential Russian steal. We haven't really seen it, still in the MHL this year, putting up strong numbers, but he put up prolific numbers before. And then Grundstrom, this is one that we've talked about a while in LA system, so I don't really want to focus on him. He's gotten that attention, and he's a bit on the older end of these uh, younger players. But I want to focus on two players, both 2019 draft picks, that being Arthur Kaliev and Samuel Fagimo. Now, Kaliev, 33rd overall pick, 2019, 6'2", 190. This is a prolific goal scorer. 18 years old, this year OHL, 57 games played, 44 goals, 54 assists, 98 points. And now we're thinking, well, what did he do in his draft year? Let's remember, 67 games played, 51 goals, 51 assists, 102 points. I did a scouting report video on Kaliev as well. Feel free to check that out for more info. But Kaliev, this year, he did actually go up in goals per game. It was about 0.77. Last year was about 0.76. So very consistent, if not some growth there. But what I really like is what he did at the World Juniors under 20 with Team USA. He got to play with four strong goal scorers, uh, well, that being himself, as well as Shane Pinto, Nicholas Robertson, we know did fantastic this year, and then Oliver Wallstrom. But he really showed them up, also played with Trevor Zagoras. Zagoras had no goals, nine assists in five games. Pinto had four goals. Robertson only had two goals. Wallstrom had one goal, five points. But what did Kelly have get? Four goals, two assists, six points. And so really showed up. Wallstrom, Robertson equaled Pinto. And then Zagoras having zero goals, nine assists. We know he's the playmaker. But Kelly have really showing up as an elite sniper. 
He's an elite sniper. He shoots with his strength, really transitions the full body strength into his shot. It's more upper than lower in that in that regard. Amazing one-timer, but also the wrist shot is fantastic. Very good at reading the offensive zone. Is this a vision thing, potentially? But I think it's a very cerebral aspect of Kelyev to use his hockey IQ to read the offensive zone the way he does. And then, in turn, that's going to just create better positioning, know where to be for the snipe. So overall, I think that's very effective in his game. Then going to Samuel... 50 uh, overall selection in 2019, six foot 194. This year, SHL, 22 points in 42 games, 13 goals, 9 assists. Not bad for just being 20 years old in the SHL. But last year, honestly, he had a better season for his draft year. 42 games played, 14 goals, 11 assists, 25 points. And so then it's like, well, there isn't much of a difference. But if you look at his international numbers, he went off the board this year. Amazing. 16 games played international junior under 20 with Sweden. 16 games played, 15 goals, 8 assists, 23 points. What a prolific sniper. So now we see there are three dangerous snipers in LA's system. We see right here, we see Kalyev, we also see Tyler Madden. This is fantastic. And we see very good hands here, quick release, dangerous sniper from any area. Really, in some ways, Kalyev snipes best from the point. But I think Fagimo overall can snipe from any area. Very good stick handling, very good speed, and natural hands. We expect that with someone who's such a dangerous goal scorer. So I think wingers could use work at this draft. There's really just two that I want to focus on. Well, there was uh, many centers that we focused on. But I do think this is someone that's very talented. Now, there is one other player that I want to focus on, that being Akil Thomas. Akil Thomas is a center but can be a winger. And so I want to bring him in right here. Fantastic speed, good vision, playmaking. Plays in all three zones very well. High speed, good agility. 51st overall pick, 2018. This year it was split between the Ice Dogs and the Peets of the OHL. Six foot 181. He had 84 points, 24 goals, 60 assists, 49 games played. The year before, 63 games played, 38 goals, 64 assists, 102 points. So point per game, very similar. Uh, overall, though, the assists are what I want to focus on. 64 assists in 63 games last year versus 60 assists in 49 games played. Akio Thomas is developing tremendously as a playmaker. Naturally, you'd expect that to be a center, but I think when you have Velarde Turcotte down the middle, you want to use Thomas in a top six role. I think he's going to shift probably to the left wing, and so whether he's top line, second line, I think there's a lot of talent here. So center or wing may not be the biggest issue for LA, but I think overall that would be very decent. But I think what is best for LA this draft is drafting a defender. Jamie Drysdale really comes off the board here. You want to get an elite number one defender, knowing that long term, you know, Dowdy will have to be replaced, others will have to be replaced. And if you look at what they have, they do have uh, Tobias Bjornfoot, they do have Kale Clegg, Sean Dursey, and then two others I'm not really going to mention, Mikey Anderson, Jordan Spence, who have looked good in uh, what they have done, but not players that I really want to dive in on. And so I want to focus on these three. So Kel Clegg, I think he's very cerebral, very good defensive end abilities, but I do want to see him get more involved in the power play. I think when he played in the Brandon Wheat Kings with Nolan Patrick, he was really focused on as that best defensive aspect, kind of opposite of Patrick being that best offensive aspect. And yet I haven't really seen him be that offensive uh, power play dynamo that we saw in Brandon. This year, 22 years old, so he's kind of phasing out now of the prospect pool sense. 49 games played in the AHL, 8 goals, 17 assists, 29, 25 points. 4 games in the NHL, no points. Last year in the AHL, 52 games played, 7 goals, 29 assists. So there really isn't much growth between this year and last year. Statistically, basically the same. There is consistency there. He's logging more minutes. He plays with an active stick, but there are some physical issues there. Great defensive end abilities. But I want to see him get more involved in the power play and at least the potential that we saw when he was drafted all the way back in 2013, sixth overall in uh, the draft to Brandon Wheat Kings, the uh, junior draft. I think there's potential there to be a top four, second pair defender, but we have yet to see that be unleashed. I think he's going to take a few more years, probably by 24, he'll be good. And I think in some ways, he's comparable to someone like Brian Dumoulin for the Penguins, someone who took a long time to unleash. NHL, first season, 16 assists, 0 points. Overall, though, eventually started to get more goals. You know, someone who's not a huge comfortable goal scorer, probably about 4 a year. But now he's becoming a signature defensive defender for not just Penguins, but the league. I think Kale Clay can develop into that, but it's going to take a while. Sean Dursey, 52nd overall pick, 2018. So 2018 overall was a pretty good draft for LA, as was 2019, it looked so far. 
21 years old, AHL, 14 points, 39 games played. Last year, OHL, 37 points, 35 games. There's a lot of offense here. When we looked at the OHL playoffs last year, he put his team on his back, 27 points, meaning 24 assists right there, three goals and 24 games played. Fantastic play there. He, the problem, though, for Sean Dursey is his play with the puck on his stick is fantastic, and he likes to do that often. When he doesn't have the pick, there's a lot of lapses in judgment. And so what do you do when you don't have that puck? A lot of development needs to take place there. His positioning is very good on the power play, makes him a potential power play uh, quarterback, depending on how he develops his game. There are physical issues, six foot 196. I want to see him use that size more, and he's not. Very good active stick, though. That's one of his best aspects. And so I think Sean Dursey can develop into being a 30, 40-point NHL player, but he's going to need some more time to do it. And so the story so far with Clay and Dursey is that both players need more time. And so when you look at someone like Jamie Drysdale, who could be in the NHL next year or the year after, we look at someone like Bowen Byram, who probably was NHL ready, but he's probably going to come in next season. Someone like Kale McCarr took a couple years. Quinn Hughes took a year. Noah Dobson took a year. But then we see people like, uh, you know, Rasmus Deline, who comes in immediately. Miro Haskin then takes a year later. I think someone like Jamie Drysdale could come in this year, if not next year, at least play a few games. LA's going to need that with Clay and Dursey taking a few years. Now, when we look at Tobias Bjornfoot, this year already came in, three games played in the NHL. No points, but you do love to see just a recent draft pick, 22nd overall, 2019, come in and do that. Very rare to see that, especially this draft. Only the top three players, Hughes, Kako, Doc, getting NHL games. To see him get three of them really was quite nice. Six foot two hundred three. I like the size for such a young age here. AHL, 44 games played, 19.6 goals. I like seeing that in this new professional mindset. The fact that he didn't play in the SHL and just went straight from Super Elite to really NHL, I like to see that. Last year, Super Elite, 22 points in 39 games. I think overall, he's very young for what you're asking of him. I think he does take a few more years to get to his full abilities, but I think we can see him in the NHL full-time two years. He's a good passer, strong transitional game, uses his physical abilities well, and he has good lateral movement. The lateral movement is kind of what I like best about his game because in a lot of ways he has great edge work. And so with great edge work, you're going to expect good lateral mobility. It allows him to get in areas defensively with positioning that one-on-one situations with the offensive player, they can't get around him. Having that ability just 19 years old shows how smart he is in the IQ department, but also how developed his game is at such a young age. I think he can also log huge minutes. And so is Tobias de Bjornfoot someone who's going to be a number one defender? I don't think so. I think he can be more the defensive rock type player who's that number two. I think that is very possible. But I want to see someone who's really elite, who's really game-breaking, like Jamie Drysdale going off this year. I think if LA drafts fourth overall, they stay where they are. Very possible. They slide into the top three. Probably not, simply because I, th- I see them taking someone like Stutzla a little bit earlier and not going for the defender. If they fall to fifth or sixth, the question is, is Jamie Drysdale still there? And at that point, who do you take? But I do think that's a possibility there. They also have a lot of people they could move up for a pick, and I will get into that. If a trade happens, I will get into that. Lastly, I want to talk about two goalies in the system. There are a few others, you know, Matthew Vlalta, but I want to focus on Jacob Ingram and Cal Pedersen. Now, we know Pedersen, 25 years old, so maybe he's not really a prospect at this point. Eight games played in the NHL, 2.64.922. The record, 5-3-0. and zero. I like that a lot for LA, someone who came in and really gave them a lot of energy. AHL was very rocky, 3.43906, 37 games. Last year, AHL, 30 games played, 402.896. Uh, AHL, Cal Pedersen is not working out whatsoever. And so when you see that, you think, okay, he's had enough time in the AHL. It's not helping his game. The the NHL last year, 11 games played, 2.60.924. So really this year, last year, very similar numbers there. And I think we're seeing that in the NHL, he played 11 games last year, eight games this year, and in all probability would have played more if the break didn't happen. He's NHL ready. And in a lot of ways, he reminds me of Mackenzie Blackwood, not in terms of abilities, but in terms of the way they developed to the NHL. Blackwood spent multiple seasons in the AHL. Question was, is this guy a bust? What is he doing? 42nd overall pick, 2015. A lot of people forgot about him. But last year, 23 games for the Devils NHL, 2.61.918. This year, 47, really is that starter, 2.77.915. 
And I think there's a lot of potential with Blackwood. I think he can be an elite Vesna type player. When you consider that the Devils aren't one of the best defensive player uh, teams, I think Mackenzie Blackwood would be fantastic on a different team. And so Cal Pedersen, some people are saying he has backup potential. He's not always consistent. Very good glove hand on that right side. He does leave angled gaps open for snipers, but he's a very high energy and work ethic player. I think he can definitely be a high-end backup. In some ways, I want to compare him to Alex Stalock. I think Stalock took a long time to get to the NHL, became an effective backup for San Jose, and then kind of tailored off, became effective once again for Minnesota this year as that starter. But I really think Cal Pedersen does have one of the better backups in the league potential, potentially the best backup in the league potential. I do think he could also be a starter, might be probably like number 25, number 26, best starter in the league, so more on that lower end of starters, but I do think that potential is there. And so I think uh, it's possible that LA will look at someone like uh, Askarov as someone to add to the system for a goalie. You could definitely see that. We saw the Panthers reaching out for Spencer Knight, even though they already had someone like Bobrovsky coming in. Obviously, the draft was before Bobrovsky signed, but it was definitely being talked about. And so having someone like Jonathan Quick, will it happen anyways, taking Askarov? And so I think Askarov is what you do if you fall in the draft to like 6th or 7th. If Jamie Drysdale is gone, if you rise up for second, third, you got to take best available right there. If it's around fourth, fifth, I think you have to do Jamie Drysdale. That is what the fit is best for the team. And so looking at Jacob Ingram, last goalie I want to focus on, 175th overall, 6'4", 190, love the size, 20 years old, OHL, 46 games played, 2.96, 0.917. Last year, we didn't see much, 57 games played, 3.41, 0.890. It's hard to judge junior goalies in terms of numbers. you got to really see stylistic aspects, but I like what he's bringing. We don't know too much about his game. I think we'll see him in the AHL sooner than later. Could be a potential backup as well for LA. I don't see starting potential, but you never know. But what I really like about what's going on here in LA is this year's draft. Like I said, fourth best lotto odds. We'll know in a week what that is. They also have three seconds, two thirds, two fourths, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. And so if they fall to fifth or stay at fourth and they want to get someone who's game breaking, if they want to get a number one center, Quentin Byfield, I think there's no need for that. I think if you land at number two, that's a difference. Maybe you do it. But when you have Turcotte Velarde, I don't see it. I think Stutzla would be great because he could pivot between the center and the wing. I think Lafreniere obviously would be amazing. And so when you land somewhere like that, do you send up maybe someone like Rasmus Kupari, maybe all three seconds and number four. You could make a move right to number one. I could see that happening, depending who drafts someone like Lafreniere. If it's someone like Ottawa, I don't see it happening. I think they just want that stud player. But if it's a team that was in the uh, qualifying round and didn't work out, someone maybe like Minnesota, I could see them making that trade. So it depends who it is. Now, we do want to look at their UFAs very quickly. Trevor Lewis and Ben Hutton, as well as Joachim Ryan, are UFAs this year. And so I don't see any of them coming back. Maybe Trevor Lewis, but I doubt it. So really, we see two defensive options completely open. I think Bjornfoot is going to want to try and play in and take a bottom six spot. I think Cal Clegg needs to try and do that. Do I think he's ready? No. I think he needs another AHL season, but I could see him trying to play in. If Jamie Drysdale is drafted, there is a spot open. So that's another question. Trevor Lewis being gone, I think that's just going to fill up uh, with someone like Gabriel Velarde being there long term. I think Alex Turcotte could make that move in. We'll see what happens there. And I think there's some other options there as well, whether that's Akil Thomas. I don't think Jared Anderson Dolan's ready, but I do think someone will fill in that spot. Now, if we look at the year after, Alex Iofalo is a UFA. The year after that, it's Carter and Brown being UFAs. So in the next two to three years, there's a lot of players shifting out. Four offensive players being gone in the next two years, UFA-wise, who have been players they've built with for a while. So I do think we're going to have to expect a lot of things if Carter, if Kopari stays, he has to move in. Someone like Akio Thomas, Gabriel Velarde has to stay consistent, Alex Turcott. So we're going to expect a lot from these players, but I do think it's very possible. So I thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy this content. Comment below your thoughts. Who is the best prospect in LA system? Is it Bjornfoot? Is it someone like Velarde keeping that potential? Is it Turcott, who just came off going fifth overall last year? And who do you think they should draft? Should it be Drysdale? If they fall, is it Askarov? If they raise, who do they take? Do they trade? What is that situation? Could they trade to first overall? Let me know your thoughts. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in more content. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching.